Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God, it's time to read Bible. Let's continue to read Genesis chapter 41. We will start from verse 33 today. Joseph was called to the palace from the dungeon. He interpreted the dream for Pharaoh right away. Joseph at this time was one who focused on God. Although it seems like God exalted him by bringing him from the dungeon to the palace, he was not excited about his own situation. After he heard Pharaoh's dream, he knew that God wanted to talk to Pharaoh through him. Therefore, he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. It seems like Pharaoh's problem was solved, but Joseph didn't just stop there. If you knew that there would be a disaster in the future, it is not enough to just knew it. Joseph not only told Pharaoh what was going to happen in the future, but also proposed to Pharaoh a reliable and executable plan. We read verse 32 yesterday, in which Joseph said to Pharaoh that the thing was established by God and God would shortly bring it to pass. Because it was very serious, in Joseph's heart, he knew God's will. The reason that God established the authority and put them in charge was that they had to be respons responsible for their people. That's why God revealed to Pharaoh ahead of time what was going to happen in his dream. And he also used his faithful servant Joseph to interpret the dream for Pharaoh. The aim of it was very clear. It was to use the power and the administrative resources of Pharaoh to open a way out for the people who will suffer in the upcoming disaster. Dear brothers and sisters, the plan that Joseph gave to Pharaoh at the time was applicable for us today as we read it. Year 2020 is a troubled year. COVID-19 spread all over the world. With the change of the environment, there was wildfire and hurricane all over the places. Many people became homeless and didn't have a place to stay. It proves that those in power should be guided by the responsibility God entrusted to them and use the various administrative resources according to God's will to deliver people from the disaster. Therefore, after Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh, he continued to say, verse 33, Now therefore, that Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. The first suggestion from Joseph was to find the right person. This man is discerning and wise. He could manage the land for Pharaoh. Chinese Union Version translated this word into wise. KJV translated it into discreet. NIV translated it into discerning. It means that he could discern all different things. A wise man knows the principle. A discerning man can then formulate the steps of execution based on the principle. So this person, on one hand, has the principle. He knows how things will happen. On the other hand, he has the appropriate discernment. He can divide what's going to happen and the solution into detailed steps so that people can execute them. The most important thing in the whole process is to find the right person. Joseph didn't recommend himself. He just told Pharaoh according to the will of God. God put you in power to be in charge. In the future, the warfare of the people in the nation is your responsibility. So although you are sitting high above and have the absolute authority, you should still find a wise and discerning man to manage the land for you. Verse 34, that Pharaoh do this and that him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful year. One person is not enough. The person needs the support of the whole administrative system and administrative resources. Therefore, you should appoint officers to support this person. Joseph knew well that one person alone would not succeed. Only under the reasonable system could this person succeed. When the disaster came, we could not depend on men because men fell, men all have the same nature. It is unavoidable that many would try to make to take this opportunity to make a fortune. 
so it is better to use the power of the government to execute these plans to prevent the opportunities from using the opportunity to prevent the opportunist from using the opportunity to make profit. So you should appoint officers to support this person. What do they do? To collect one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years, because people will have abundance in the coming seven plentiful years. There will be seven plentiful years. Everybody will have abundance and have surplus. If it's not managed properly, all these surplus will be wasted. So he told them clearly to collect one fifth of the produce, because it is plentiful year. Eighty percent of the produce should be enough; the rest of them should be collected. Verse thirty-five, and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming, and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. Other than collecting one fifth of the produce, if there is surplus, they should be stored up. The storage of the grain requires special condition and should be handled in a special way. Otherwise, they could become rotten easily. Store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh and keep food in the cities. You should centrally manage it and set up warehouse in each city to store these surplus food. Why is it in each city? Because in the future, food should be distributed in each city. On one hand, there should be a certain there should be a central management system. On the other hand, the warehouse should be set up in each city for the convenience of distribution in the future. The whole process should be under the authority of Pharaoh. That is, the one in power should use his administrative resources to manage strictly, so that no one could make profit from it. Verse thirty six. Then the food should be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which should be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. Joseph knew the will of God. He could interpret the dream for Pharaoh. He also understood that the responsibility that God entrusted to those in power was to take care of the people in the nation, especially when there was a disaster. He drafted a detailed plan for Pharaoh to store the food during the plentiful years, so that they could be distributed to people in the years of famine. We read in the Bible the plan that Joseph proposed to Pharaoh. We had to thank God and praise God for His work. Those sons who used to work might have made some business plans based on the modern management concept. The construction and execution of the plan should follow five principles. English is smart. S is specific. There should be specific person, things, and objects, and specific plan. The second letter M is measurable. The impact of the plan in the future should be measurable. The details of the execution should be quantitative. A is action oriented. The plan should be executable, and the details of the execution should be laid out. R is realistic. It is realistic. For example, there will be surplus in the plentiful years. If they collect a high tax up to twenty percent, it is still acceptable. The grain should be stored in the cities, so it will be easier to dis distribute in the future. The last letter T is time frame. There should be a time frame. The plan that Joseph proposed happened four thousand years ago. If we look at it from the principle of modern management, it totally corresponds with the smart principle. We can only say this is the wisdom of God. And don't forget that Joseph was just, was just set free from the dungeon. The prince. The prisoner who had been in the wet dungeon now stood in front of Pharaoh. He could speak so wisely; it is unbelievable. Verse thirty-seven. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. This is not a trivial matter. The Pharaoh at the time had all the power in him. 
If he was not happy, he could sentence Joseph to death right away, just like the chief baker. As Joseph spoke, we can imagine that God was with him. His words had the authority from God, so that Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the land at the time, agreed when he heard them. Verse thirty-eight. And Pharaoh said to his servant, "Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the spirit of God?" It shows here that Joseph was one who put God in the center of his life. He interpreted the dream for Pharaoh and made up a detailed plan for Pharaoh. Others could see that it came from God, although Gentile didn't know God. They could see that God's spirit was in Joseph. It is difficult to find such a one as these. Verse thirty-nine. The Pharaoh said to Joseph, "Inasmuch as God has shown you all these, there is no one as discerning and wise as you." This Pharaoh was a good king at the time. When he saw that this person had God's spirit in him, he recognized it. Through what he said, he could see that Joseph was a wise and discerning man. He not only had the big principle, but also had the detailed execution plan. So Pharaoh made a unbelie make an unbelievable decision right away. Verse forty: You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Verse forty one: And Pharaoh said to Joseph, "See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt." Pharaoh, on one hand, knew people. He listened to Joseph, who was set free from the dungeon to interpret the dream for him and make a detailed plan for him. Immediately, he knew that this man could help him. He gave him the authority right away to rule over his house, and he also asked all his people to listen to Joseph. He set him over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should know that the upcoming famine was a big disaster. If there was no good preparation, people in the land would suffer. So he was willing to give the authority to Joseph, and he also asked people in Egypt to support him. As we read this, we think about what's happening over the world right now. How we hope that God can lift up a Joseph to help those in the authority in each nation, so that the pain of the people's suffering can be reduced. We need a ruler like Pharaoh. Who had vision and was willing to empower, so that when there is famine in the world, he can take care of the need of the people. We can't help to think about the first miracle Jesus performed on the earth. It is recorded in John chapter two. Jesus went with his mother to Cana to attend a wedding. The wine ran out at the wedding. Jesus' mother knew Jesus, although Jesus. Hour had not yet come. His mother said to the servant, recording in John chapter two verse five, "Whatever he said to you, do it." So the servant walked with Jesus. There was the first miracle to change water to wine. Jesus' mother knew Jesus. She knew that he could deal with the problem that the wine ran out at the wedding. It also tells that in our life on the earth, in things that people think we are happy. Such as wedding, wine could run out. The earthly things, regardless how beautiful they are, are all vanity at the end. Only if we drink the wine that Jesus turned from water could it bring us the true eternal joy. What Joseph saw for Pharaoh was the problem that the land would have famine. His resolution was pretty simple: that is, to store up food during the plentiful year. So that there was food during the famine years, dear, dear brothers and sisters, the spiritual situation should be the same. During the time that we follow God, God will let us have plenty years, plentiful years, as well as famine years. Are you in plentiful years of famine year in your spiritual journey? When you study Bible or pray or fellowship with other saints, are you full of provision from God? Or do you often feel you are lack of food during the plentiful years? You should well prepare to store God's words in your heart, so you will not lack when the famine comes. Most of the church today face the spiritual hunger. God's words are no longer lifted up. 
What should we do when we face spiritual hunger? Turn to Jesus. John chapter six verse thirty five, and Jesus said to them, "I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst." John chapter seven verse thirty seven. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture had said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. When you face the spiritual hunger, you should come before Lord Jesus Christ. He could provide you the food and the living water. Let's pray. Lord, in twenty twenty, the year for a challenge, full of challenge. Lord, remember all the children belong to you, so that they could find the provision of food and living water in the famine. Thank you. You are the source of all our provision. Help us to come before you to seek help from you. Bless the church I am at. May the church become one which store up food during the plentiful years and distribute them to people during the famine years. Bless the church I am at and the church life. Pray in Jesus' name.